Glory to God. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Coast Word Church again. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Amen. There is liberty. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your word. We've come here ready to receive of you. Lord, in areas of our life where we've been ignorant, where we've lacked understanding, where we've been misled, mistaught, frustrated, Lord, we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you bring great clarity now into the hearts and lives and minds of each and every person that hears this message. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. Your anointing which has been already spoken of, that removes burdens, destroys yokes of bondage, sets us free. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We welcome the presence of the Lord and for your glory to fill this room. Your manifested goodness Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you and glorify you and honor you now as we go before your word. We expect signs, wonders, and miracles. We expect signs, wonders, and miracles in this place, in our lives, not only tonight, but every day of our life, signs, wonders, and miracles. We have an expectation by faith now to see, to experience signs, wonders, and miracles. Lord, help us to be more aware of what is true, to be more aware of spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me, Heavenly Father. Help me to be more aware of what is valuable what is important, and what is true. Lord, in areas of our life, where we have gotten the, the things of this world out of priority, and we've placed them above your word, help us to see it, help us to understand it, and help us to put your word spiritual things in the correct priority first and foremost in our life in Jesus name amen praise God hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus praise the Lord go with me in your Bible to John chapter 3 verse 6 please I want to talk about tonight as we've been teaching as we were two, a couple weeks ago, and thank you again, Dr. Dominic, for ministering last week while we were uh, over at KCM. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about and teaching on the subject of how to walk in the Spirit. Say that with me, how to walk in the Spirit. <laughs> One of the things that we need to know about in terms of walking in the Spirit, you know, it, it, let me just back up. You know, you, you, you hear... You, you may have heard that term in your life, walking in the Spirit, but not really knew or understood exactly what that meant or what that means. And there are a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings of what it means to walk in the Spirit. Now, I thank God that I, I've grown up in the church, uh, and I remember particularly, uh, it seemed like, you know, when you're a kid, you don't really 
you don't really get the big picture of what's going on, but I guess it would have been in the 70s, which would have been probably part of the charismatic movement as I would know it now. Um, walking in the spirit, or that term, would have become probably pretty popular. And, uh, and I noticed there, even as a, a, a child, that, that there was a great movement of, of people that were endeavoring to walk and live in the spirit of God. Um, I think that was, that, that was wonderful, and yet in that you see how there are, there are people also that, that mean well, but they just don't know, and so as a result, they kind of just do what they think is of the Spirit. That's why I believe that having a solid foundation of the Word in your life, it gives you the correct understanding and operation of how to truly what it means to walk and live in the Spirit of God. Amen? And so that's, in this teaching, what I'm endeavoring to do is give you the scriptural understanding of what it means to walk in the Spirit. One of the, part, one of the processes, I believe, in walking in the Spirit is being aware of what is Spirit. <laughs> well, I think my, my estimation is that much of the church, and I'm not trying to just ball us, you know, put us all in one group, but many Christians are still very carnally minded. They're very, let me say it like this, they're more aware of, of flesh than they are of spirit. They're more aware, and there's more focus on the natural rather than the spiritual. Now, I'm going to say this because the world that we live in is dominated by its flesh. It's worldly. Worldly people, that's what they know. That's how they live. That's how they think. That's how they process what they do. Every, you know, they don't have their... I'm just going to use some terms, and I hope it just comes out right with the help of the Holy Spirit, but... They don't filter things through their spirit, man. They just see, hear, and react. But Christians shouldn't live like that. We have a much greater ability to see things, hear things in the natural, but yet bring those things into... Um, subjection or through what I would say the filter of our spirit. Best way I'm, I'm describing it right now. And in the filter, our filter is, is made up, the, the fibers and the mesh of our filter is made up of God's word. And God's word will catch things. You know, the Bible describes the word of God as quick and sharper than, in a, than any two-edged sword, right? Dividing asunder the soul from the spirit. And that's what the word of God will do. The word of God, as, you, as, you, as the word of God is in your life and in your heart, the soulish things of the world have to, the, the, the word of God will quicken those things and we'll say, ah, 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 no, 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 don't, that, that, that's, you don't have to act like that anymore. You don't even have to respond like that anymore. Yeah, Amen. And so, how does that happen? That happens by us being spiritually aware. And so that's what I want to talk about. My subtopic is being spiritually aware. So let's, let's read this. John 3, 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Let's read it together. Ready? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, I said this a few weeks ago that we can we can be aware we're in this natural world. And to be spiritually aware, 
And to be spiritually minded doesn't mean we don't have to take the garbage out still <laughs> or go to the mailbox, right? I mean, we're just not going to sit home and go, I'm all spiritual now. I don't have to do anything else. Like, that's it, right? No, we, we, there's still natural things. We still live in a natural world. We're, we, we, you know, we go to work and so on and so forth, but we're not limited to that, right? So, so there are natural, there's a natural world we live in, but let me say it like this. When we're going to take the garbage out <laughs> or going to the mailbox, we can focus on more than the garbage and the mail. We can literally be walking, praying, and fellowshipping with the Lord during that time. We can. We can. You're driving to work. It's not just a mindless drive to work, crank the radio on, and and just flesh out, right? We can drive the work and we can be listening to the word, can't we? We can be praying in the spirit, can't we? And we can be preparing our own heart and our own life for that day and the people that we encounter and come in contact with, right? So what I'm saying is there is a spiritual awareness that we can on purpose develop in our life. Amen. That which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. And when you become born again, you're born of his spirit. That's why we say here, you are spirit. That's who you are. You're born of the spirit. You have a soul, your mind, will, emotions, your thinker, feel, or chooser. You have a soul and you live in a physical body. You are a three-part being. Because you are created in the image and after the likeness of God. God said, let us make man in our image. He said that in the book of Genesis, right? Chapter 1, verses 26, 27 through there. And then, who is us? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three parts, right? And so, this, that discovery is, is key in understanding your spiritual makeup, first of all, that you're a three-part being. I think I I personally think that is ab, of absolute importance for for a believer to understand that. Now, what I said a few weeks ago is that flesh. When I say flesh, the natural mind, the natural man, the soulless part, can be can get so overdeveloped that it comes to a place that where a person is just dominated by flesh. Um, I'll give you just some natural examples. You ever know or hear of somebody who is just dominated by, you know, maybe by food or alcohol or, or drugs? I mean, people that, that love their family, and next thing you know, they're stealing from their own family members because they're just got to get their next fix. And, and then it just rips, begins ripping families apart and so on and so forth because here they are stealing from maybe their own parents or their own, you know, cousins or whatever else maybe, right? What is that? Dominated by flesh. Just absolutely dominated by flesh. I mean, they, if you were to sit them down and say, what are you doing? I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I just, I did everything, anything I could just to get that next fix, right? Dominated by flesh. But there are lesser degrees of that. Okay, that may be an extreme degree of it, but there are lesser degrees of that in a person's life. For example, um, flesh can begin to dominate how you live. Flesh can dominate how you react. Flesh can dominate your decision making. Flesh can dominate how you react to people. If, you know, you, you, I, I, you know, I've got, I've had, Friends who were, you know, I remember in high school who were of, you know, they were Italian. And they would, you know, they would just fly off the handle at times and they would just go, well, I'm Italian. It's just like who we are, right? You know, and, and as if like that made it okay to react like I didn't know, you know, I didn't know much different. I thought, oh, okay, you know, guess that's what all Italians do, right? No, no, well, what that is is that's giving into flesh. That's, that's all that is. 
now that you understand it, right? And it doesn't matter, you know, the enemy will use any, any, any excuse for you to lose your cool, right? You know, uh, it's how you grew up, it's your ethnic background, it's how your dad act, your mom act, whatever, on, so on and so forth, right? It be, so what happens is an overdevelopment of a person's flesh and awareness of flesh begins just to dominate the life, and they just, boom, short fuse, right? Well, that's how I grew up. I grew up on the streets. You know, you, you, you push me, I'm going to push you back, right? It's flesh. It's all flesh. And it can get you in trouble in a hurry, right? Now, Jesus made a very clear distinction here between what is flesh and what is spirit. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. Jeff, could you help me out here? It's really ringing up here, please. Thank you. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. Now, here's the good news. Thank God. We, as, as a child of God, a born-again child of God, we no longer have to be dominated by our flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, that we're born of the Spirit. You say, well, I don't, I don't know how to do that. That's what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to walk in the Spirit, and I'm teaching you how to be more aware of Spirit than of flesh. But I'm, 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 I'm taking my time and identifying and showing and teaching areas of the flesh. Areas of the spirit, areas of the flesh, and areas of the spirit. And so we're going to just ping pong back and forth between these two areas just to lay this foundation in our life so we have an understanding of it. And we, as children of God, can live a life that is led by the spirit of God. Say this, I can live a life that is led by the spirit of God. Amen. And, and, and weeks previous, we said, well, how, how is that? What, what would a life look like like that? Well, we said, first of all, it would be a life that is led by the spirit of love. Because God is love. Right? Yeah. Right? So in your filter, I'm just using this tonight as an example, in your filter, the first stage of your filter is love. Amen? Now, we can also walk in the love of God and we can, as a child of God, born of the Spirit, we can have a revelation of spiritual things. We don't have to just look at natural and bang our head against the wall and get all upset and frustrated and throw our hands up and say, how come I ever, you know, it's just everything just seems like it's falling apart or this person never changes and that person never changes. All people are subject to change. Let me say that again. All people are subject to change. Will everybody change? No, but all people are subject to change. So you can't ever lock someone in and say, they're never going to change. There's no, there's no faith in that. There's no love in that. You, can you imagine if God, who is the spirit of love, took that mindset? Right? Thank God everyone in here has changed. <laughs> Right? Amen. Aren't you glad you've changed, right? Right? So, what do you, what, so don't ever look at someone else and say, they can never change. That, they're just stuck in their ways. No, no, no. Be more spiritually aware than fleshly aware. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. You're born of spirit. So now you have an awareness of spiritual things. Spiritual things, spiritual things can have a great impact and change natural things. Jesus demonstrated this in his life and in his walk on this planet. Is that right? In fact, it's God's will for every one of us to have the Spirit of God living inside of us, to be led by his Spirit, and that we would be filled by his Spirit so that we are no longer limited to that which is flesh. That's God's will for, for mankind. Now, not everybody will walk in, not, in that. Not everybody will receive that, but it's his will for everyone. Amen? Go with me to John 6:63. I said this last week, but, or two weeks ago, excuse me, that God, God never intended for mankind to depend on what we see and feel to lead us through our life, okay? 
Now, we, we looked at this as well, but I just want to just keep going over this. Keep going over it. Faith comes by, it comes how? Hearing. By hearing. And hearing what? The word, of God. the word of God. John 6, 63. Let's read it together. Ready? King James. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The spirit does what? It quickens. It quickens. We said that that word quickens, I gave you the definition of it, means to cause to live. To cause to live. It's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit, another definition of quicken is to make alive. If you're writing notes, write that down. To make alive. Another one was to revitalize. The spirit revitalizes our life, right? Another uh, definition of that was to invigorate. The Spirit of God will invigorate a person. To restore to life, to give increase, seeds that quicken into life. The word quicken, right? You know, um, when we first discovered, you know, began to go out in the, in the early 90s to the Southwest Believers Convention out there, and, you know, it's like getting a boost, a boost of spiritual ah, God himself, you know. I mean, it was like a full week of the word, you know, six, seven days of just, six days of just, you know, five sessions a day, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. That word invigorate is a great definition of understanding the word that quickened us. And here we are in our early 20s, you know, and, and been sitting in church, you know, and you, you, know, you think, well, I go to church, right? I go to church, I'm good. Until you get in an atmosphere like that, and then all of a sudden, you get invigorated, you get revitalized in a way that you had no clue that realm even existed in this earth. And when the Spirit of God, it quickens you, I tell you what, it'll change your life forever. Amen? Oh, it's the best. Amplified says, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Providing eternal life. And if you remember, the message tramp, uh, translation said, The Spirit can make life sheer muscle and willpower. Don't make anything happen. Every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word, and so it is life making. Now, walking in the Spirit, made this comment also. Walking in the Spirit, I think this is a very important point if you're writing notes, I, I would suggest you're writing it down. Walking in the Spirit starts by just simply being aware that how we feel about something isn't all there is to life. I believe that's, to me, that's where learning as a young person what walking in the Spirit what does that mean, you know? You, I know as a kid I grew up, the only th closest thing I knew was Casper the Friendly Ghost, you know? And you're like, that's spirit, right? That was a spirit. That's, I'm thinking, you know, walking in the spirit, you know? But walking in the spirit, I think the very first steps, the very beginning process of that and understanding that is understanding that my life no longer has to be limited to or limited by just how I feel about something. That there's something, that there's, there's something more than just how I feel about it. There's something more than just what it looks like circumstantially, right? There's, there's, more, there's more to it. And so I go, wait, if there's more to it, well, how is there more? Now the, 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 the carnal mind goes, there's nothing more? What do you mean more? This is it. Deal with the facts that are in front of you. The spiritual realm is the highest form of reality. 
It's the highest form of reality. Amen? Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say that again. The spiritual realm is the highest form of reality. You know, I mean, any, any honest Christian, meaning honest with themselves, believes that if they believe they're going to heaven. Because, you know, the spiritual realm doesn't begin after you stop breathing. <laughs> right? I mean, it's not like, okay, I'm done with the natural life. Let the spiritual life begin. Here we go. But that's almost, the, you think about it, that's almost a, the extent of people's spiritual understanding of how spiritual things work. It's like we're natural, 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 natural to get right up to the end to die. And no, okay, now we're spiritual. No. That's not how it works, right? Amen? Look at this, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's me. That's you, right? point I want to get to is right here. Who walk, say this with me, ready? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, right? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so, again, a number of weeks ago we talked about how do we walk after the spirit. And so you can go online and catch those other other messages on how to walk after the Spirit. Go to Romans 8, 4, a few verses down. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Look at this. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Again, we see who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, right? So there is a walk, there is a life to be lived on this earth that is, that is beyond walking after the flesh. Again, it doesn't mean we, oh, I don't have to go to the mailbox anymore. I'm just going to believe the mail is going to make its way in my house, right? That's not what we're talking about here. We still go to the mailbox, still take the garbage out, still wash the dishes. Our kids still make their bed, right? <laughs> Hopefully, in Jesus' name, our kids make their bed, right? I'm a faith preacher, all right? That's what we do here, right? <laughs> You're catching on, right? <laughs> but how do we walk after the Spirit? And so this is what we're talking about. Go to Galatians 5, 16. Kind of start and pick up here where we left off a few weeks ago. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. <laughs> Glory to God. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Say that with me. Walk in the Spirit. Hmm. And you will, shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So we can see now that walking in the Spirit, as we walk in the Spirit, we won't, we won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Because we're walking in the Spirit, right? Walk in the Spirit. A lot of people try to not walk in the flesh. And they think, if I just stop walking in the flesh, then I must be walking in the Spirit. That's not what he says to do. The Apostle Paul says, walk in the Spirit. And you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Amen. Walk in the Spirit. And you won't fulfill, again, so much focus on flesh, meaning, oh, oh I did it again. Oh, I'm not going to do that again. Just start walking in the Spirit. Well, how, how do I walk in the Spirit? Very easy. Walk in the ways of the Word. That's the second stage to your filter. Walk in love. Walk in the Word. Walk in love. Walk in the Word. What's the next part? Walk by faith. Live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Walk by faith. 
Well, I just can't believe they did that to me. I can't walk in love. Well, you're not walking in love and you're not walking in faith. And that, that, that right there, your spirit should catch that and say, that, that's not faith. That's not faith now. Is that faith? Right? I mean, the Holy Spirit, this is what this always does me. Is that faith? Just little simple things. Is that faith? Is that love? See? And, you, and, and, and he's quick. He's quick. He, you know, stuff doesn't just float by the Spirit of God and you go, oh man, I missed that one for you. I, I would have helped you, but I was busy helping, you know, Dominic because Dominic needed a little extra help this week and so I lost track of you, Pastor Aaron. No, just kidding. So, <laughs> that was just a fun joke, okay, guys? He can handle it, but you guys, I don't know. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is that the Spirit of God's quick. Be spiritually aware here. To, to, to what he's saying to you. You start getting over-opinionated about something? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Right here. Am I walking in love? Am I walking in faith? Amen? Natural, you know, natural feeds natural. Right? And flesh feeds flesh, but spirit feeds fl- spirit. Spirit feeds spirit. Go to Romans 8, 4 here. Back over to Romans. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Next Romans. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 4. Um, Matt, could you help us out with the air conditioning? You might be fine, but it feels like a meat locker up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Romans chapter 8, verse 4 says, That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They mind the things of the flesh. Now, what does it mean to mind the things of the flesh? So I want to sl- take the, to slow down here and just look at these things. Well, you could say it like this. They that are after the flesh are more aware of the things of the flesh. They mind the things of the flesh. They're more aware of of the things of the flesh. They that are after the flesh are more aware of the things of the flesh. In other words, a person is more aware of what they see, they're more aware of, of, of how they feel about something, they're more aware of what they heard about, you know, this person, that person, or even a report that came, you know, in, in their own hands about themselves or whatever, and what happens is the, the natural realm consumes how they feel and consumes their attention. They mind the things of the flesh. They are more aware of the things of the flesh. And they're less aware of the things of the Spirit of the Lord. See, if you're more aware of this, then you're less aware of this. And you'll find that one of the easiest ways to identify what you're more aware of is by what you talk more about. It's like if you want to check your own inventory, check your vocabulary. Check your conversation. Ask yourself, am I talking faith about this or am I just... Talking circumstances and natural and limited and, and you know, and uh, 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 what are we going to do, right? That's a, 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 a very easy way to find out what you're more aware of. Am I more aware of, am I minding the things that are of the flesh or am I minding the things that are of the spirit? 
Am I more aware of spiritual things? Am I more aware of the spiritual power and anointing of God? Or am I more aware of what the circumstances look like and what it, act, what, what it seems like in the natural? Amen? Amen. Now, go to, um, well, let me just read it again. They that are after the flesh, Romans 8, 5, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now, we're going to come back to there to Romans. Go to Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to give you, I want to show you something right here. We've all probably seen it if you've been in church for any much time at all. If not, maybe it's your first time seeing it. No big deal. Look at this. Luke chapter 9, verse 51 says, And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into the village of Samaria of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him. Say that with me. They did not receive him. Because his face was of, of, of though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he, Jesus, turned, rebuked them, and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And they went to another village. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say they went to another village. <laughs> that alone spoke to me this week. I was focusing on the upper part, and, and, and maybe we'll get to the, and they went to another village. We'll see here. So the people here in this, in this, in this village, these Samaritans, they wouldn't receive him. They didn't welcome him. One translation says they wouldn't welcome him. Now, their response to Jesus was carnal and it was fleshly. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't spiritual. He's the son of God, right? I mean, Jesus is... is you ever read about other villages that Jesus went in? You ever read about the results that took place? He went in healing, saving, delivering. I mean, mighty miracles are taking place, right? And here now this village, nah, now welcome here. That's carnal. Say carnal. They that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are of the spirit, the things of the spirit. Is that right? Yes. Now, but when the disciples, what's interesting about this is then the disciples, how they respond to a fleshly, carnal response. You can't control what other people think about it, but you can control how you respond to it. Oh, I'm, I'm getting in your business a little bit here now, all right? Lord, they said, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and to consume them. These are the dudes that are hanging around Jesus. These are his disciples, right? Now, this was clearly acting out of their flesh. You know, welcome to us. We'll take care of you. Can we, can we call fire down? Don't raise your hand. Do you ever want to call fire down? And somebody, you know what I'm talking about, right? Are they acting out of their spirit? No. Nope. They that are of the flesh <laughs> are more aware of the things of the flesh. They were more aware of being rejected. They're traveling around with Jesus. They're part of Jesus' group. They go in there to prepare for Jesus to come. They're not welcome. They're rejected. And now all of a sudden, they're out for blood. 
right? They're more aware of that rejection. Mm. You ever been more aware of somebody who's rejected you, who's treated you poorly, who's treated you wrong? Maybe it was a dad, maybe it was a mother, maybe it was both. Maybe it was a spouse, maybe it's an ex-wife, ex-husband. Maybe it's a former boss. Amen? Hmm. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. Remember this we just read? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Right? One thing that we read there is this. And they went to another village. Whose idea was that? Jesus. All you have to do. That's an answer right there. Just, just go to another village. Just move right along. Some of you just need to move right along. You've been sitting there fighting and kicking and screaming and crying and <clears throat> be more aware of spiritual things. Be more of the destination. Yeah, but uh, so many people are, are so aware of, 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 the, of, the, of the travel of this rather than the destination. Yeah, but we hit a pothole. Who cares? Let's look at the destination. Oh, you took a wrong turn. <laughs> look at the destination. Oh, I know, but I, I thought everything was going so good and just right, and now it's not so right. Keep the destination in mind. Go to another village. Amen. Keep your focus. Be more spiritually aware. They that are of the flesh, they, they, they pay more attention and they're more aware of the things. People, we got to let these, we've got to let so much. I mean, there, there is so much strife going on. I mean, you turn the television, I don't care what news station you turn on. There is strife after strife. Where there is strife, what else is there? Confusion and every evil work. The enemy is trying to get strife in the hearts of believers, and he's trying to use politics to do it. Be more aware of what is spiritual and what is spirit, than that which is of flesh. You know what your part is? Your part's to vote, yes, but your first part is to humble yourself and pray. Don't sit there and yakety-yak and yak and yak. All you're doing is blabbing about what you're more aware of. Do you believe in the power of God or not? It isn't in our president or in this person or in that person or in this member of Congress or in that judge that we trust. It's in God that we trust. Amen. Believers, we cannot lose faith in the truth. We cannot lose faith in righteousness. We have to remind ourselves that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. Amen? Go with me to, um, well, hallelujah. Go back to Romans 8, 5. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Filtering things through love. Amen? Through the love of God. You know, we, we have to develop this spiritual awareness on purpose. I mean, it has to be our mission. It has to be our focus. It has to be something that you, you literally, you catch yourself. You've got to be willing to correct yourself. You can't have your wife correct you for the rest of your life. You can't have your husband correct you the rest of your life. And you can't even have your pastor correct you. You've got to, at some point, start correcting yourself. 
you got to say, you know what, man, I got man, I got to think a little different here. I got to come on, come on, stop acting like that. You know, it's good you come to church and get corrected, but you got to start correcting yourself too. You got, you know what, I'm I, that was stupid thinking. I it, that was I, I'll just talk to myself. I'd be like, you know, the Holy Spirit gets on me, and I just fess up right away. You know. I, I used to like try to dance around. Now nah, just deal with it. Just rip the band-aid off and be done with it. You know, like Lord, you know what? That that was stupid. And I, like I said, I'll get on the phone, and if I, I if, if the Lord corrects me, you know, I said something, did something little. You know, this happened about a month ago with me with somebody. You know what I did the next morning, Friday morning? It happened Thursday, right before church. I called him. I said, Hey, listen, listen. I, I got to repent for what? This guy said, you know, and he's a Christian, but he, you know, he don't quite know what we know. And I said, you know, there's some things that I said, and I, and the, and the Spirit of the Lord corrected me about this. And I said, uh, my, my, uh, my provider is the Lord, and I don't, I don't ever want you to think or have any pressure or feel that that there's any way, shape, or form you have to meet my need. Amen. I said, my job is is to love you. And my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, you know. And he was real generous about it. He says, well, hey, yeah, no, I didn't take that at all like that. And, and so, and, and he might not have, but the Spirit of the Lord is just keeping my heart right, right on track, a little thing like that, you know. Just, and I find if you just correct yourself out loud and to someone, that's a, you're a lot less apt to just let it slip the next time. Because you know you're going to correct yourself. Amen. Judge yourself, lest you be judged. Amen? Now, you know, sometimes these little things, the, 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 we just, we, we do, we, we walk and we're spiritually aware, but we got to do it by faith. Because <laughs> sometimes they don't feel so good. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it seems like, well, you know, this isn't working. How many of you ever, like, worked out? Like, maybe you intentionally worked out. <laughs> That was a joke. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you actually went somewhere on purpose to work out. Or maybe you did an activity that you used a muscle repeatedly, and you use it, use it, use it, and then all of, like the next day, and then two days later, you're like, <laughs> right? I remember one time, my brother and I, we were so excited about going skiing. We, we went out to, to Breckenridge. We, <laughs> my wife, and we, we went skiing. And, and, I mean, you know, we went skiing. I mean, we we're going skiing. We we're going skiing. We're getting our money's worth out of this hill, right? I mean, I think we went down that slope 24 times in that day. I mean, we were there when the place opened. And, you know, and they have night skiing. And, you know, those are some long runs. Well, we had like a two-day skiing pass. We couldn't even walk the next day. <laughs> and we're pretty athletic guys. Our calf muscles and legs were so sore. We we're like, oh, are you kidding me? We we're laughing and in pain so bad. Why? What happened? We, we were using an area that we, that day, we didn't feel it. But buddy, did we feel it the next day, right? And I'm telling you, that can be like this. There can be areas of your faith. You begin to just exercise your faith in an area for something, and the Lord will begin to reveal to you areas that you haven't been using your faith in. He does this to me all the time. He'll go, why weren't you using your faith in here? And you just, you just start using your faith for that in that area, and then, then you just, it just increases. It just multiplies, and you just become more aware of spirit. More aware. You know, some people don't even consider using their faith for gasoline. They're just so used to pulling up at that pump, slapping it in there. And I've, you, you, some of you heard the story. I mean, I remember, you know, back in the day, like the top half of my gas, the top three quarters of my gas tank never got wet, ever. <laughs> Dry, it never saw full. And I remember, I was a teenager, you know, I was like in my late teens, and I remember, this stinks, man. I had some gas in a bucket, a quarter a gallon. It didn't matter. It was like, it was, that was it, man. Five bucks, scrounge together the change, and go as long as you hope you can go, and hope your girlfriend doesn't have to push the car like she had to do a couple of times. <laughs> yep, that happened to us too. 
And I remember, I mean, I was like, okay, I'm growing in this. I'm growing in this. And so I started using my faith. I pull up the gas pump. Lord, I thank you that I have enough money to fill this tank up. That's where I started. I mean, these were some of the areas I started in, right? And, and that, just, that just that little act of faith began to make me more aware to use my faith in a lot of other areas that I hadn't even thought of using my faith for. And I, and I still do it to this day. I pull up, I'm putting fuel in my, in my vehicles. I go, Lord, I just thank you that I have more than enough, that my cup runneth over, that my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory. And guess what? I don't care what the price of gas is. I don't care what the price of diesel is because I'm not going to, I don't even care because my God, my God. And so guess what? If they talk about gas prices, <laughs> gas prices, I, I am so far beyond gas prices in my faith. Are you kidding me? Say, we should be progressing with this. We shouldn't have to sit there and get upset and then talk to three people at work. Yeah, you see how much, pra- oh yeah, you see how get, get gas prices are on the way up again. Oh yeah, you see it, yeah, yeah, yes they are, yeah, yeah. Oh, insurance, uh, health insurance, oh yeah, health, yeah, yeah, health insurance. What happens if you're not using your faith there? Ouch, amen, hello, come on. Am I right? What do we do? We become more aware of our faith. We become more aware of what is spirit. Less aware of what is flesh. Amen. Doesn't mean we're stupid. Doesn't mean we just, you know, just blow money on everything, you know, because you're just, oh, I'm in the spirit and, you know, money doesn't matter. No, I'm using my faith. When I'm pumping fuel in my vehicles, I say, Lord, I just thank you that I'll always have enough. Doesn't matter what the price of fuel is. Because I remember a time where there was talk that fuel would go to like six, seven dollars a gallon. And just the thought of that began to bring fear. How am I going to run my business? How am I going to operate? How am I going to drive around? And I begin to think, if I can't drive around, what good does the vehicles do? You might as well start selling it. You might as well do this. And see, the enemy was taking me down that road and making me more aware of what is flesh rather than that of which is spirit. Amen. Be more aware. Exercise your faith. The more you exercise your faith, the more you'll find out what you have. Just like when we, exer- when we exercised our physical body, you begin to find out you have muscles you didn't even know existed. <laughs> You'll find out you have faith that you didn't even know existed. Amen. And that's what God wants to pull out of you. That's what he wants to use for you to rise up and to increase in him. Amen? These are just very basic ways of how to walk in the spirit and how to be more aware of what is spirit. Did you get something out of this? Yeah. Stand your feet, please. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I remember, you know, I don't know if some of you may or may not have been affected much by 2008, you know, when the re- recession was happening. And I just remember praying about it and the Spirit of the Lord just revealing to me. I thought, you know, there's no less money. It's not like there's a recession and all of a sudden money's disappearing. But what it is, people become more, they become fearful. And so now currency and business begins to slow down because people go, oh, shortage, shortage, shortage. You see how that, that, how that just had a, such an effect on our nation and had a ripple effect around the world? Fear of shortage. Fear of not having enough, right? No, 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 no. Be more aware of what is spiritual. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your word. Lord, that we would be more mindful of the things of your spirit, of those things which are spirit. Lord, we pray, we worship you, We honor you in spirit. We can and we should endeavor to become more aware of what is spirit. So we ask now that you would help us. Help us to grow in our awareness. That it would start inwardly. That we would even be reminded of that example of the filter (laughs) that we would filter our decisions 
through the love of God, that we would filter them through the word of God, that we would filter them through faith. We would ask ourselves, well, is that faith or is that fear? And then we would grow in our awareness of that which is spirit. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you, you, you want to get saved. You, 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 you want to get saved. And so we, before we, before we dismiss, we always give, that, give people that opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And make him Lord of your life. So if that's you and you're here, we welcome you to come forward as I dismiss. Prayer couples, please come forward. Be available for the people now. Be up here to pray for those who need prayer. Or if you'd like prayer in any area of your life, maybe you or you know someone who's dealing with something or going through something, we're always here to pray with you. Remember, you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, blessed going in and blessed going out. And everything you set your hand to prospers. You're the lender, not the borrower. You're good looking. You're dismissed.